What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back for another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. First things first, happy new year, y'all. I'm not going to scream because the mic going to blow out and it's going to be too much, but happy new year, man. Happy 2023. I can't believe it's already 2023, but that's a whole nother conversation that we'll get into a little later. But thank you guys for a fantastic 2022 and an exciting year to come. No real updates. You guys have been continuing to support the podcast over the break, which uh, thank thank y'all because the numbers still been going up, even though I hadn't put out any episodes. So I really appreciate that. And as always, and as to start the new year, I'm going to continue with the updates about happenings and things that are going on. I usually take this time to talk about any upcoming shows and, and whatnot, but I ain't got none on the books. I'm taking a little break. I, I My burnout is continuing on, so I'm going to shift and focus on a few other things. So, you know, as far as checking my website, still continue to do that. Still continue to check my social media for any other updates. I'm at Cornelia across the board. But besides that, y'all going to hear what's going on directly on the Black News Podcast and about what's to come. So with all of that, with all of the thank yous, with all of the happy New Year's, let's get into it. How was y'all's break? How was the holiday break for you? The holiday break meaning a lot of people took those last few weeks of the year off or they just had specific times um, during Christmas and New Year's where they had a couple days to spend time with family, friends or even by themselves. How was your break? I'm going to tell you all one thing. I ain't kicked it that hard. And by kicked it, I mean relaxed and did nothing. I ain't kicked it that hard since I, I would say since maybe 2009. I ain't even lying. Since I've been in LA, I got here in 2010. I feel like I have been going nonstop. And over the break, meaning those last two years of the month, um, last two weeks of the year, y'all, oh my goodness. I usually take that time to catch up on work and projects. And I thought I was going to do that again this year. Y'all, I didn't do shit. I kicked it. I laid down, watched TV, caught up on movies, the entire time I had me some hard liquor. I was drinking cocktails at the crib, maybe ran some errands, probably did my hair like once because I went to a holiday party, house party. But outside of that, I woke up, showered, brushed my teeth, made some breakfast, sat on the couch, continue on rinse and repeat every day. And it was the most incredible thing that I could have done for myself. Reason being, I have been super burned out, super tired, super exhausted. Again, going hard for years and not just entertainment. I'm talking about, I've had a, a gazillion jobs at one time. Okay. And it can really wear on you. So I don't feel guilty and sad that that's how I chose to spend my break which is an improvement because old me would have been, would have been feeling bad. I am not feeling sad. Okay. I am pat on the back. Okay. Pat on the back. Um, also been reflecting, right. As we go into the new year, a lot of people make resolutions. I don't necessarily do that. I do map out and have an idea usually about what I want or what direction that I'm headed in. But for real, I don't know what I want for 2023 career wise, big goals. There have been a lot of things that I've been doing and have been working towards that aren't necessarily fulfilling me anymore, that aren't giving me joy. And I have gotten to the point where I want to do stuff that makes me happy. I want to be fulfilled. I want to be excited. And if that is not happening or things aren't serving me, I am feeling more empowered to shift. So right now I'm just trying to look at what that means overall, what that means for purpose, because I'm one of those people. I feel like I 
have identified or been shown what my purpose is. But the question now is, is that my purpose or has it shifted a bit or has the direction or the route to purpose been adjusted? So we'll see. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the year and everything that's in store. I will, you know, always focus on maintaining my health, mental health, physical health, spiritual health, all of those things. But I'm just excited for the unknown because I don't know what's going to go down. Uh, and I'm, ex- I, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see. So how was your break first? And second, what are you looking forward to? Or what are your resolutions for 2023? Because, you know, if you're like me, I just want to experience life and, and all the good things. So that's, that's what I'm on. That's what I'm on for the new year. Feel free to hit me up on social media at Canelia with what you have planned or what you are expecting or or looking towards and 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 hoping for in, in this new year. Um, hit me up um, with your thoughts. So what did we miss? We missed a lot. We missed a lot. I will tell you over the break and right before that last week that I did the podcast, I feel like stuff just kept happening. Stuff just kept happening to the point where I was like, listen, I might have to fire up the old podcast equipment and record episode because so much stuff just kept going on first. And when I say first, I'm going to touch on just a few of the bigger topics to discuss. First, Tory Lane's in the slammer, y'all. That that boy is behind bars, okay? The clink, the pokey, the slammer, the big house, he he in there. You which whatever y'all call it, he up in there. That boy, that boy's in on the inside. Okay, he the inside man. That boy is incarcerated. In case y'all missed it, and I don't know how, because I've been talking about this for the last I don't know how many months. Tory Lanes was on trial for at the time allegedly shooting Megan the Stallion. He was convicted. Which he's appealing, by the way, which we expected. But Tory Lanez has been found guilty of assault with a semi-automatic firearm, carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharge of a firearm with gross negligence. That boy got convicted. Those are all of the charges, and he was convicted on all counts. He faces a maximum of 22 years in prison, and possible deportation back to Canada. Let me say that again. That man is facing 22 years in prison and deportation back to Canada. Mm. Now, throughout the trial and before that, the the difficulty was people online go make their own opinions. And a lot of times what I've noticed, people don't be reading books. They don't read articles. They just go off of feeling and emotion and how they personally Uh, you know, what they personally think about situations or people. So there was a huge effort to try to discredit Megan Thee Stallion or to say she was lying. And the whole time people kept saying, wait to the trial, leave it up in the court of law. Well, we see what happened. We also finally heard, because after a trial wraps up, the evidence can be released to the public. So we finally heard the call from Tory Lane while he was in jail to Kelsey we found, we finally heard, and let me back that up. He was on the phone apologizing over and over to Kelsey. He did not specifically say for shooting her, but if I'm in prison and I get a couple phone calls, I'm not going to call you just to apologize for cheating. I'm not wasting my phone call on that. I'm going to call and apologize maybe if I shot somebody. So, okay, we leave it at that. But we also heard the neighbor's ring camera of the gunshots we heard and saw the ambulance video of Megan inside crying while being treated after she was shot so with all of this evidence with the results anybody still saying that she wasn't shot and that she's lying you you're probably just a hateful person at this point there's no other way around it. If you could see all of these things and hear all of these things and still in your mind, try to formulate a, an opinion that isn't common sense based that says she was shot. Then I don't know what to tell you. I do hope that she gets some peace of mind after this. 
This has been really difficult because there has been a public attack on her, on her sexuality, on her talent, on her just as a person, which I do not appreciate. And I've been very clear about that. So <sighs> prayers to Megan the Stallion. Um, and as things are continuing to update, I'll make sure to bring it here to Black News because we're still waiting on sentencing for Tory Lanez. And we're also still waiting for updates about the appeal. So what do y'all think overall? Were y'all expecting this? Were you shocked? I was shocked that he was convicted. I know. I ain't going to even lie. Um, but were you, did you feel the same? Hit me up on social media with your thoughts at Cornelia. Another unfortunate incident that happened over the break a few days ago. And by a few days ago, I mean a few days from when I'm recording this podcast. Damar Hamlin, who is a football player for the Buffalo Bills, was pretty much knocked out on the football field and had to be brought back to life mid game. Like, I'm, I mean, y'all, this is the craziest thing I feel like I've seen in sports. So, Damar went into cardiac arrest after just a, a routine tackle during the Bills versus Cincinnati game on January 2nd. And when I mean routine tackle, it was just a normal football play. He then went into cardiac arrest. And now we later learned that he had to be revived two times before he even got to the hospital. They stopped the game they had crews on the field working the ambulance, put them in, took them to the hospital. He has since been discharged and is back in Buffalo. Thank God. But y'all talk about it was the, some of the scariest. It was it was scary. It was frightening because, you know, we know how dangerous football is. We get so used to seeing it that sometimes that we sometimes forget how barbaric it is. But these are grown men literally ramming their bodies into each other with football pads and helmets on. That's not safe. It's just not. So it was tragic to see. And it also sparked a lot of conversations from people, from people about the NFL and rules and guarantee salaries and protocols. And they, at one point they were talking about um, trying to force, not force, but discussing if they were going to re resume the game once they got him to the hospital and reschedule. And it was just a bunch of stuff, which at the end of the day, weren't really important because we were literally hanging in the balance, waiting on news about a man's life. But thankfully, he is okay. He is, um, he got moved to a stable condition. He is no longer in critical condition. I see you, which is good. And again, he is back in Buffalo. He received an outpouring of support from everybody. And which was one thing that was really good to see is DeMar had a GoFundMe up for, I believe it was a toy drive. It wasn't associated to to, to this situation, it didn't get put up right after this happened. It was already up. And I think the target amount for that was something like $20,000. Like it wasn't even a huge amount. Do y'all know the last time I looked that GoFundMe had reached $8 million in donations? As soon as that happened, people started, people found the GoFundMe and started donating money. And it is up to over eight million dollars which is incredible it is incredible I'm sure this is of course a life-changing moment for him but also I know he is excited to change people's lives with those donations and and to use this moment as something and for something because let me tell you something God is real and something like that don't happen to you for no, I won't say for no reason, but we are often put in situations that are used as a testimony to bless ourselves, bless, bless people around us and to help us along the journey and, and on our purpose. So I'm excited to see what this young man ends up doing. Is he going to go back to playing football? Who knows? After this, I wouldn't be playing shit. Y'all ain't going to catch me on the field. Okay. You trying to suit up? No, I'm not doing nothing. Okay. I'm a, I'm blessed, but who knows? Who knows what will happen in regards to that? Um, we just got to stand by and see. 
please just gotta stand by and see. Uh, so you know, I'm asked, what did y'all think? Especially were y'all watching the game live? I had it planned in the background. I was cleaning up and doing things. So I didn't see it in real time. But when I looked up and, and kind of realized, oh shoot, something going down, I stopped and paid attention. But what did you guys think when it went down? What were your reactions and what are your thoughts moving forward, especially around NFL and the safety issues uh, and protocols about this situation and how they can protect their players moving forward? Let me know. Hit me up on social media with your thoughts. Next, let's talk about the TikTok challenge that went wrong. And this particular discussion is around Angela Bassett and her son. Who y'all TikTok is for everybody. A lot of the challenges are geared towards Gen Z. They range from anything, dance challenges, uh, prank challenges, you name it. This particular one was a prank where you are being filmed and by you, it could be anybody. But a lot of uh, the chatter I heard was around filming parents. Kids are filming their parents, a reaction to a fake celebrity death. And in this case, Angela Bassett's son filmed him telling Courtney B. Vance and Angela Bassett that Michael B. Jordan passed away. Now, Michael B. Jordan did not pass away. Michael B. Jordan is alive and well. He is kicking it. Creed 3 coming out in March and I will be in theaters that weekend to see it. You understand? I can't wait. But he was filming his parents and posted it. So now one, I didn't get through the whole video because it was so uncomfortable uncomfortable for me. And when stuff is so cringy, it makes my anxiety go through the roof and I can't handle it. So I did not finish it, but I did find blogs and articles that talked about it. And mind you, this is a few years after we lost Chadwick Boseman, who Angela Bassett worked with, as y'all know, on Black Panther. So how the video got from recording to post it that's I don't understand how that happened because I would have got my butt whooped but now his her their son issued a, a video apology looking like he had his old his old whole ass whooped just like I said he looked like he'd been crying poor thing and um so it there was some resolution to it. And based on those two parents, they seem old school. They probably had that young man call Michael B. Jordan himself and issue a personal apology, which I kind of hope that he had to do. Because you ain't about to be throwing, you ain't about to be playing with my name like that. I, like, come on, man. So an update to this, because as y'all know, in the industry, Angela Bassett was asked about this on the red carpet about what how what there was a te what teaching lesson came out of this and she basically said you know we use this as a moment to teach apologies was were issued and we move forward as a family which was a very it was a great answer because while this was wild and while I need people to stop doing this challenge on TikTok let's keep in mind that's a young man I think that that child is only sixteen and the brain don't fully develop till you twenty five. The the area that is, of the brain that is focused on decision making is not fully developed until you are 25. So you gonna make mistakes and your dis, your decision making gonna be the bull. And I can only imagine some of the things that I have done and mistakes that I made or bad decisions or bad calls that um, came from me. So who you know? It, I get it. I get it. I just hope that as a, a people or just as human beings, some shit ain't challenge worthy. Stop playing. Somebody like stop playing. That's all I want. And I'm sure some of y'all agree because it's one thing to be doing the dance challenge all over the place, but it's another thing to be playing with people life because power of life and death is in the tongue. And you want, that's one thing you don't need to be playing with. Okay. So let's just, do better on social media. What did y'all think when y'all saw this? Or did y'all even hear about it? It was only a chatter for maybe about two days and it, and it kind of got squashed. So 
you know, not surprising if you haven't. But with that, with that, let me know your thoughts around the whole situation. Or if you know somebody personally that did the challenge and if they got their butt whooped too, hit me up on social media with your thoughts. And it wouldn't be right if I did not take a minute to mention and acknowledge the unfortunate and untimely passing of the legendary Lola Gangsta Boo Mitchell. Gangsta Boo passed away on January 1st, New Year's Day of this year. She was a member of 3-6 Mafia, one of the original members known as the Queen of Memphis. Passed, she passed away. She was found, I believe, dead on her porch. And, and there has been no reports about the cause of death. So we're still waiting to hear about that. But she was only 43 years old. Not sure if I, if I said that already, but it's just really unfortunate and really sad. Um, I'm a fan of rap, women rap. Where them dollars at was my song. Tear the club up like Gangsta Boo. She a legend. She a legend. And it's just, it's really, you know, we, and I say we, by I mean, black people, we've been losing a lot of people, a lot of artists, a lot of legends, a lot of friends and family. And it's just a lot, you know? So I can only imagine with her, what her close friends and colleagues are, are, are going through and then how they're feeling and prayers to her family and friends, because I know this is a difficult time for them. 43 years old, y'all. <sighs> so, you know, shout out to Gangsta Boo, the legend. And I pray that she has a peaceful transition to the other side. Let me know your favorite Gangsta Boo song, Gangsta Boo moment. One of my favorites was I went to Versus. Y'all remember I was at the Three Six Mafia versus Bone Thugs and Harmony versus, and Gangsta Boo is a good time. So shout out to her, man. Let me know your favorite Gangsta Boo um, song and moment. Um, hit me up on social media and uh, and share it with me. Let's get into honorable mention. For honorable mention, shout out to the best man final chapters, man. Shout out to that. I really enjoyed that series. It's, you know, I'm nostalgic and it was just, it was, I believe, eight episodes of straight up throwback. I was thoroughly enjoying myself. Okay. It was on Peacock. Your girl had to get Peacock. I was holding out and I might cancel it next week because I've watched everything that I need to watch. Ain't nothing else on there that I want. Now, I got Peacock finally gave in for this series and I was pleased. It was, you know, there was some moments where I was kind of like, mm -hmm. but overall, it was a good time. But I do want to ask y'all, and if y'all watched, I'm not going to necessarily, if you haven't watched, I'm not going to give no real spoilers, but I'm going to talk about an overarching theme that was addressed to an extent in the series and the movies y'all who is the villain of the best man franchise we've been having conversations on social media about this for quite some time and it it was re-sparked by this series but the villain is it Q that's Terrence Howard's Terrence Howard's character Harper Tay Diggs Jordan which is Neil Long or Robin Sana Lathan who is the villain in the best man franchise? Personally, I think the obvious choice is Harper, a.k.a. Tay Diggs, his character. Harper been raggedy the whole time. OK, Harper is the villain. I'm and I'm open to debating this because at some point you can think Q was the villain. Who's Terrence Howard? character you could say even more chestnuts character is the villain because he was remember he was sleeping around on mia the whole first movie until they got married it could be anybody it could be shelby which is um now terrence howard's character q's new wife because i will say spoiler alert they got married but it's harper harper the villain harper since the beginning, Harper had sex with his best friend, girlfriend. He wrote a book about it, was about to have sex with Jordan, 
during that wedding that he was the best man at. Then he proposed out of desperation at the reception of the relationship he almost ruined. Harper is the villain. But let me know what y'all think. And if y'all enjoyed the series, I've gotten um a lot of um uh people saying they liked it. A few people said they did not. So let me know what y'all thought about the best man final chapters and do y'all think this really it i personally do but you never know stuff be coming back they be saying it's over but it ain't really over so hit me up what did y'all think about the series um overall uh let me know at canelia on all social media To recap this week's episode, we talked about 2023 and what we expecting, what we going to do, what we not going to be doing and what we're looking forward to most in this upcoming new year. We also discussed the Tory Lanes versus the people and the trial results. Tory Lanes was convicted on three counts and we're just awaiting to see what's going to happen next in regards to that whole situation. We also mentioned Damar Hamlin and the status of his condition right now. He is on a road to recovery, but he was the Buffalo Bills player that was that had to be resuscitated uh, during the NFL game on January 2nd. Angela Bassett's son got wrapped up in, in, a, in a weird TikTok challenge, which has been resolved. So we're happy about that. But just an overall overall conversation about social media and some of the things that we should and should not be doing online. And lastly, we honored and discussed the legendary Gangsta Boo, the Queen of Memphis, who passed on January 1st, 2023. Hit me up on social media with your thoughts about all topics, some or none. And with that, I'll check back with you next time, same place. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you again so much for sticking with us, supporting the podcast, liking and subscribing on all apps where podcasts can be heard, rating five stars and leaving a comment. It helps more than you know. So I really, really appreciate it. And keep sharing Black News with all of your friends and family. Be sure to hit me up on social media if you got ideas for topics. Or just hit me up in general to let me know you've been listening. Let me know your thoughts. I'm at Canelia on all platforms across the board. That's at Canelia like Kenny and Ophelia. Also check my website. I got some shows coming up in a Los Angeles County. Hopefully get on the road soon. But for now, if you're in the LA area, hit me up. Check Canelia.com for show dates and details. And as always, thanks again so much guys i hope you have a fantastic week keep supporting keep growing keep building keep staying safe and keep staying healthy as always again i'll see you back here next time same time same place bye